thanks for joining me today. My name's Jo and I'm an independent Stamping Up demonstrator based in the UK. Um, today I've got quite some lots of exciting things to show you but first of all I want to apologise for having no videos for my Monday mashup for the last two weeks. Um, I took on a short-term contract um, work which has taken up a lot more time than I anticipated so um, it that's why I've been sort of absent from the craft videos, but um, I'm back and hopefully uh, you'll enjoy what I've got to share with you today. So the first thing I want to share with you is the catalogue. We have a brand new catalogue coming out from the 4th of May. So if you haven't already requested one, then please get in touch and I'll be happy to send one to you. Um, I can't show you inside it just yet because this is brand, brand new. As I say, 4th of May, you'll be able to get your hands on it both online and in person if you give me a shout. Um, some really beautiful stuff coming in here. Absolutely loads and loads of stuff that I'm in love with, as you can imagine. And I've been busy sort of trying to create a few things behind the scenes, which you can see I've got very inky hands today. Um, so that's our first thing. But the set that I'm actually going to be creating with today is called Pansy Patch. So this is um, the set we're gonna be using. I think you're going to love it. Um, it's got lots of different elements in it and I'm just going to show you sort of how I use it um, as we go through the card. I'll show you the sample in a moment. So that's the set we're going to be using. I'm going to be using some other little bits and bobs, that, um, some little embellishments and some little um, cord and stuff like that. You'll see really lovely, beautiful stuff. So let's let me show you what I've got first of all. So the first thing I want to show you is our new colours. So you may have seen these online, you may have not. Um, these are our five new in colours. So if you're new to Stamping Up, every year we have five new colours which stay with us for two years and then they will um, disappear. Sometimes they return, but more often than not they don't. So we have to make the most of them while they're here. So these are our five colours this year. We've got Polished Pink, Fresh Freesia, Pow Papaya, Soft Succulent and Evening Evergreen. Um, I absolutely adore all of these colours, which is quite unusual because when we have a set of five colours, sometimes they have to grow on me a little bit. Um, but actually, I've fallen in love with all of these right from the word go. So I'm really pleased. And they actually work really beautifully together, which is quite unusual as well, because we quite often have two or three that go together, but not usually all five. So that's a really, really nice um, element there. So I'm really excited to be using these today. So let me show you what we're going to be making. So this is our card. As I say, this is using the Pansy Patch. Now I have used um, a few of um, the new colours. So I have used the um, Fresh Freesia, which is this one in the background here. I have to get my teeth in for that one. Um, Soft Succulent is this lighter green here. And then Evening Evergreen is the dark green. So I've mixed it with some old and new. So as you see, this is the Fresh Freesia. I definitely do need to get my teeth in. Um, so it's a really beautiful, soft, sort of lavendery sort of colour. But it, it, I don't know, there's something about it. It's just really, really pretty. Um, I'm really keen on that. So um, that's the one I've used. But I'm actually going to be using today um, the polished pink because I thought it would be quite nice for you to see this card or a similar card in a slightly different way um, and a slightly different colour. So we're going to be making a slightly smaller panel for the front um, and we may be doing it in a straight line. We may be going diagonally. I'm not sure yet, but you'll see what I mean as I start, start to work and you'll see it kind of has its own sort of way of going, really. So that's what we're going to do. Um, I will just run through some colours with you on the original one so you know exactly what I have used. As I explained, for the leaves, I have used soft succulent for the main flower and then the detailed is evening evergreen. Now for the pansies, I have used gorgeous grape for this dark outside edge. I've used stamped off fresh freesia. This darker purpley colour is rich raspberry and then the centre is daffodil delight. So you can see the different colours that I've used and I'll explain the colours I'm going to be using this time, okay? So, 
you're going to need your card base to start with. So this is a standard A6 card, which measures 21 centimetres by 14.85. I've scored at 10.5 just to give us our card base here. Now, on the original one, my evening evergreen, so the dark green piece, measured 13.85 by 9.5. And the basic white measured 9 by 13.35. So that's for this one. We are going to make our border very slightly smaller this time. So we're going to have more of that beautiful pink coming through. So the evening evergreen is 9 by 13.35. And our basic white is 8.5 by 12.85. So you can see it's just that little bit smaller. Gives us that little bit extra of the base card coming through. I thought it'd be quite nice. And as I say, I'm going to try and do a slightly different shape on this one. Um, but what I haven't decided, uh, this is for the inside, so that's going to be the same size as this one here. But what I haven't decided is whether I want to use a soft succulent base here or whether I'm going to go with the evergreen again. So I've cut one of each so that when it's all put together, I can make a decision once that's done. OK, so today to make our card, we're going to be using what we call the masking technique. So if you're not familiar with masking, it's a way to add images together so that some of the images actually disappear into the background. So, for example, if you're looking at something, if you're looking even at a plant, some flowers will behind, be behind others and some will be in front. Um, there'll be various sort of angles that they're at. So I'm just um, showing you how to do that. It doesn't work just for flowers. It can work for literally any stamps in your collection. So it's a really good way to mix and match and get them to um, work together. So first thing you need to do is to cut yourself some masks. So what I've used is um, I've just used a normal post-it note. So where the sticky edge is, I ink the stamp that I want to mask and then I stamp it so that it's on part of that sticky section and then I simply cut out okay so that's all I've done there I've done them ahead of time just to save us a little bit of time today and what I've done is I've actually um, I'm just going to bring that in because it's easier for me to stick them on the edge there so what I've actually done is um, cut three of the leaves and two of the pansy heads um, I would recommend you do more than one of each because you'll see as we go on, sometimes you need two or three just to, to hide the image that we're, we're working with. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to do um, try and do it along this left hand side and do more of a collection of them. That's the plan. We'll see what happens. OK, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start. So on this one, I started with this flower here. And again, I'm going to start with a flower at the bottom. It's better when you're putting things behind to start at the bottom. If you want things um, to be behind, sort of going the other way, then you need to start at the top. But with a flower, certainly, I would always start from the bottom of my page. So this is where I'm going to start. So if I bring in all the different stamps, you'll see there's various stamps we're going to be using. These are the four main ones for the actual pansy itself. And then we've got two also that we're going to use for the flower. And I've temporarily misplaced one. What have I done with that? There it is. So that's, that's um, sorry, for the leaf. So they're our two for the leaf. And these are the four for the flower. So this is our two-step stamping. But in fact, we've got four on this occasion. Um, but basically, it's a way to build up the depth in your flowers and to bring the colours through. So we're going to work through it and then we're going to see sort of where we go from there. OK, so you'll also need just a little bit of scrap of paper or I'm just going to use a post-it note just to stamp off onto um, from time to time. So two step stamping. It's a really good concept. It works really, really well. Um, some of the images it's better to start with the base image and work upwards some of the images it's easier to work with the, the next layer and then work backwards so that you're building the, the actual image up I've played with different ways with this pansy and I have found the easiest way to do it is to start off with the detailed um, flower stamp so I'm going to start off with that and as I say I'm using polished pink 
So I say these all brand new, nice juicy ink pads. So I'm going to stamp this layer and I'm going to use this in first generation. So this one is going to go onto my page first. Okay, as you can see, it is quite bright. It's quite nice and nice and vibrant. So the next layer I want to do is the inside and you'll see why this is, is easier to do it this way. So I'm just stamping off to get rid of most of my ink and then it's easier for me to line this up. If I did it the other way round, it was harder to see where I was actually going, especially because the, the bottom layer is that little bit lighter. So I recommend that you do it in that way. I'm then going to bring in my next colour. So this is Rich Razzlebury. And then for the very centre, I've used Daffodil Delight. So they're my three colours for my pansy on this occasion. Just got to make sure I ink the correct one. So this is Rich Razzlebury. So this is my centre of my pansy. Now these two sections here at the top are going to line up with these two edges here and you'll see there's like a little triangle in the middle which is that little triangle in the center of these pieces um, I apologize if my head gets in the screen I'm going to try not to okay so that is my little center there and then I'm going to grab my little triangle and you'll see the triangle has got a little curve at the bottom so where that little curve is is where I'm going to place that in the center so that's my first pansy okay so now what I need to do is I need to add my mask so I'm going to take one of my pansy flowers and pop this over the top and just make sure it just sticks down they will lose their sticky eventually but you just need to um, sort of play around and make sure that they sort of um, stick well enough so now i can either move on with some leaves or i can work with another pansy head so i think first of all i'm going to work with a pansy head so again i'm taking my polished pink and i'm going to stamp over the top of this one slightly but it's still going to be quite a lot of it on show again polished pink which I'm going to stamp off okay which raspberry for my center and then finally daffodil delight for my little triangle in the middle okay so if I lift this off temporarily she says confidently there we go so there you can see that I've got this flower is behind this one okay so I want to now start adding some leaves or more flowers so you can decide which way you want to do it I like to add my greenery at this point because I like to kind of see what direction it's going in, which is why the other card sort of, you know, uh, went off sort of at an angle, because I just sort of followed natural sort of flow of it. So there you go, I've added two of my masks. So these are my pansy masks, so that my stamping underneath is not going to be affected by it in any way. So now what I need to do is to bring in my other ink pads. move some of these out of the way a little bit okay so this is the dark one so this is evening evergreen and then this is the lighter one which is soft succulent now this is where you could get um, muddled up <laughs> so just be careful which one um, if you make sure you put your sticky label color inside which I haven't there look at that one um, that helps you to because when they're laying down like this you can't always see which color is which so this is the detailed stamp so I'm going to use this one first and this is going to be an evening evergreen and I'm going to stamp it onto my page over my mask and again here and again here 
and I think I'm going to have another one over here but what I am going to do is to stamp the top on first because I might lose the definition of where that's going so this is the top one and this is soft succulent so you just need to make sure that you line it up the best you can I can't really see everything so it is a bit of a hit and miss whoops nearly the wrong one but where these sort of little um curves are you follow that on the edge of your stamp and again here Okay, and I am going to add another green one here. Now, it's sometimes difficult at this stage to see exactly what your end result is going to look like because obviously you've stamped over the top of your pansies. Um, so it's quite sort of, you can't fully see, but you'll be able to see in a second when I lift these off. There we go. So can you see now you've got that greenery in the background behind your flowers, which is what we're looking to achieve. OK, so the next thing I want to do um, is start building up my layers. So I am going to do another little green one off to the side. But what I'm going to do also is to mask one of my leaves. It's always better to mask more than you need to rather than find that you're actually stamping over an image that you don't want to. So just mask away. It's better to have it masked than it is not. Whoops, don't do that. <laughs> I was lucky it didn't go on my page. OK, um, I'm going to put another one in here. So it's just a case of um, playing with it really and just sort of building it up as you go along, which is why I quite like to do the um, uh, sort of as I go, as opposed to doing all the flowers and then all the greenery, but it is personal choice. So you do it whichever way you want to. Okay, so if I just take that off so you can see that as well. So can you see I'm building up more up here. So now I'm going to add another pansy here and one here. So I'm going to mask that pansy again. I'm going to mask all of these leaves here. So this is why I say have more masks than you actually need because um, it's surprising. And also if the sticky starts going on them um, you want to be able to replace them. OK, so as long as I don't go to this one, I'm good. So I'm going to start with doing one here and then I will mask this and move over to this side. OK, so I'm going to pop my green ones out of the way so I don't get muddled up for a moment. So I'm going back to my polished pink. So this is my first one here, which I'm going to pop over there. I'm not worried about this going on my desk because I, I can just wipe my desk afterwards. But um, if you prefer, you could do it onto a piece of um, scrap paper. I will wipe it up in a second. So it is a lot of changing of stamps, but actually once you get into the swing of it, it flows quite nicely. You kind of get where you want to go quite quickly.
okay so that's my um flowers done i can see just on here it has picked up a little bit of that green but i'm not worrying about it because i'm going to be putting my greeting probably over that point anyway um but as i say you'll have more room you'll have more time um so you'll be able to do it perfection okay so now that that's done and I've cleared my decks a little bit, I'll wash all my stamps and everything later. Um, I want to show you sort of how I did the background on this one here. So on this one, I used um, Rich Razzleberry and I'm going to um, do the same on this because I want to pick out those darker elements. So what I did was I took my Rich Razzleberry ink pad and I gave it a little squidge so that some of the ink went into the lid. I'm then going to take one of our water painters and just mix some up with some water. So I want this quite fluid so make sure that you mix it up quite nicely and can you see it's already sort of flicking. So what I'm going to do is just lightly flick this over the background of my card. Now you don't have a huge control over this so it is a case of just doing as much or as little as you want to just try and be a little bit careful so that's done i will dry this very quickly in a moment so it does splat a bit so just make sure that you clear up afterwards i'm just going to run this with the heat tool just to dry it quicker normally i'd let it dry automatically okay it's just enough just so i don't smudge it the next thing I'm going to do is to take my um, Winker Stella. Now, um, these are um, the glitter pens, as you, as you know, so they're quite um, quite juicy. But what I want you to do is just to give it a really little squeeze, just so you can see the ink moving in this little um, channel here. And then what you'll find then that that is pushing the ink down to the bottom. So now I'm just going to make some splats with my wing of Stella over my page. Now you will find that you probably can't see that on camera, I don't know if you can or not, but it is coming out. You do have to bash it a little bit. And as I say, don't be afraid just to give it another little squeeze. Okay. So again, that's done. And I'm just going to, again, just give it a little dry. Okay, as I say, normally I would let that dry naturally, but because I'm, I'm handling it, I just wanted to make sure that it was absolutely um, dry or as close to as I can. And I think you might be able to see that now, all the sort of splatters over the background. It's quite pretty. Okay, so let's bring in the card base. And I just want to, um, oh, that's for the inside. I'll do that later on. So I want to see whether I like it with this dark evening evergreen background or whether, in fact, I prefer it with the soft succulent. I actually like the soft succulent on this occasion. I think it's um, it, it softens the whole thing, but I think I will still do my greeting on the evergreen because I think that will stand out a little bit more then. So I'm just going to glue my piece down. I love this soft succulent, it's such a pretty colour. I'm just trying to be very careful how I'm handling this. That's why I'm sort of holding it in a bit of a strange way because I'm just trying not to touch any of that ink in case it isn't quite dry. Okay, so I actually attached this to my card front, front using um, dimensionals. I thought it just gave it that nice, because the stamping is flat, I thought it gave it that nice sort of little lift and the greeting will also be on dimensionals. OK, 
go. So I'm just going to hold this up while I line it up. Okay, so I'm going to do my greeting next because then I can decide exactly where I want to place it once it's done. I'm going to use the same um, greeting as I did before because I really like it. Um, and it says, a little hello from me to you. So they're great ones just to send to friends or family, especially if you haven't seen them for a while. I know we're still not really seeing people at the moment, so it's all a bit strange, isn't it? So... Uh, so I'm using Evening Evergreen. I'm just using my dust buddy just to get any fingerprints off. I'm then going to be using the Versamark ink pad. Okay, and I'm just going to try and get it as straight as I can because it will save me doing too much cutting. And I'm using white embossing powder for this. Okay, so I'm now just going to trim my banner. I may just need to trim it slightly, but I'm going to start with this way. I've put my little guillotine trimmer down somewhere, and I don't know where it is at the moment, so I'm having to do it on my main trimmer. But that's okay. And I didn't really measure this. I literally just sort of trimmed it and cut it to sort of a size that... Um, I thought looked about right so um, I suppose it's, it's about one and a half centimeters wide but of course that might change depending on what greeting you're using so I'm take a little tiny bit off the end there we go so this is my greeting now you could cut this out and um, you could do it whatever way you wanted to really um, I'm thinking I don't want to hide too much of my flowers. I know I have got my little green mark here that I wanted to hide, but I'm going to be putting some cord on as well, so I think we could get away with that there. So I think that's where I'm going to put it. So the first thing I want to do now is to add some of the cord. Now the cord is taken from um, some new cord called Simply Elegant Trim. This is actually part of a different suite that has got the most exquisite papers with it. Um, but we have got silver and gold cord and we know how much we all love that. So um, I have used a little bit of that today and I'm just going to grab a glue dot. Okay, in fact, I'm gonna grab a couple. So I'm just gonna work out again, so it was just sort of in here. So I'm just gonna put a couple of little glue dots on here. I'm just gonna use the end of my scissors. So just sort of about here. I'm gonna use a couple just because I'm gonna be using um, two or three rounds of, of the gold. Okay, so all I did was I took some of this and it naturally curls because it's coming off a roll. So I just kind of wrapped it round about three times until I had some loops. And then I trimmed my end. And then once I was sort of happy with my kind of loops, I just stuck them down and then readjusted. So once it, once it's stuck down, if you want to make some of them slightly smaller, some of them slightly larger, you can, and just sort of play around with them until you're happy. As I say, I wanted to disguise that little dark patch, so we've got rid of that. And now what I want to do is to attach my greeting over the top. So I'm gonna pop it down to about there, I said. So I'm going to be using our little, um, mini dimensionals these are the black ones because they're great for 
our dark coloured card. And the reason I'm popping it on like this is just so that I can make sure that that cord is going to be hidden underneath. And then at the end, I'm just going to add a couple more. These black dimensionals are great for um, with use with the dark card because you can't obviously see see it underneath, which is brilliant. Okay, so again, I'm just going to hold this up just so I can line it up roughly where I want it to go, make sure it's straight. There we go. And then finally, which is a, another lovely new product, is the 2021-2023 in colour jewels. So these are in our five colours. This is Evening Evergreen. I'll pull in my original one here. You can see this is the um, Fresh Freesia. So that's this one. Evening Evergreen. This is your So Succulent. This one is your Power Papaya. And then this one is your um, Pink, which I've forgotten the name of already. Polished Pink. They take a while to sink in the names. So again, I'm just going to take the end of my scissors. I find scissors great just for lifting the gems. There we go. I'm going to stick with all pink, I think, because I think they're really pretty. So there we go. So that is our finished card. So as you can see, two quite different cards but they've been made using exactly the same technique so they're really good fun for um, learning the masking technique and also building up sort of pictures so you could make a wreath from it you could make like a, a half wreath which I suppose that almost is um, you could do a straight line anything you wanted to really so you know have a play have a have a, a play around with the colours. I've tried various colours. These were the two that were my favourite at the moment, but I haven't tried too many of the sort of yellows, oranges. Um, so although these are pansies, they're almost like little violas, these ones, because there is a bigger pansy within the stamp set. So um, I think we can use a bit of artistic licence with what colours we want to use them for. So I hope you liked that today. Um, as I say, everything will be available from the 4th of May. If you'd like a catalogue, then drop me a line. I'll happily send you one if you're in the UK. Um, and also, why not become a demonstrator? I'd love to have you as part of my team. Um, we have team meetings. We have get-togethers. We have some, some good fun, sometimes online, sometimes in person. So, um, yeah, I would love you to join my team. So have a think if you'd like take some more information then just get in touch okay thanks for joining me and i'll see you next week take care bye